Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studio in New York City, here is Steve Malsberg. You know, it's worth it just for the uh, guitar at the end, I'll tell you. Uh, joining us now is uh, the one and only Mary Madeline, Republican political consultant, former campaign director for the George W. Bush uh, uh, and uh, Dick Cheney uh, campaign and chief uh, counselor to uh, uh, Vice President Dick Cheney. Hello, Mary. Steve, I don't want to hear that song anymore because it's only, it's only the guitar riff at the end, and it's probably not, it's only the guitar riff at the end, and it's probably not even them playing. I know you love it, but can we find another Mary? Okay, or? we could do that. Along comes Mary, or there's got to be a million uh, Mary songs, right? There, for it was Mary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We All right. Way back. All, All right. right. You just gave my production. My production team. Their hair. Their hair just stood up. But okay. That's fine. Next time we'll do. We'll have another one. I promise. I'm not saying I haven't liked it in the. We'll have another one. I promise. I'm not saying I haven't liked it in the past. I'm just saying we can move on. Okay. Now. It just struck. It struck me as not musical. I know we differ on the monkey, <laughs> but. Um. All right. Good enough. Done. It's done. Thank you, you ask, it's done. No more Thank monkeys. You. Sorry, sorry, Davy. Well, Davy left us, but sorry, Mickey and Peter and Mike. Uh, Mary says no more. All right. Um, you know what? I wish we could say no more to Vladimir Putin. How do you like that segue? Pretty good. Uh, well, that's why they pay you the big bucks. Huh? <laughs> so, um, you know, he's campaigning. He's in Seattle. You know what I got a kick out of in Seattle? He's, he told, according to Politico, he told the folks he was at a fundraiser, I don't watch much TV news because most of the stuff I already know. Uh, and then uh, John Stewart played a whole bunch of, uh, I found out about this on TV. I found out about this watching on TV. I found out along with everybody else watching on TV. So that was kind of ironic. But um, is he still a wall in your view? Well, uh, yes, of course he is, and I, you, that's sort of emblematic, what you've just described is emblematic of the, the presidency of the whole administration. It's, it's, I'm not responsible. I don't even know about it. I was just talking to a friend of mine, that formerly of, uh, in the intelligence community, once you're in intelligence, he said, we knew, we knew ISIS, we know Boko Haram, we know all of this stuff. We know it less well than we did because of the desecration to our intelligence community and, and policies, that because of the Obama policies. But if he doesn't know it, then that speaks to his competence or his concern or his commitment. But it certainly says something to not know the kinds of things you're required to know, you're obligated to know. And I don't know any other president, including Jimmy Carter, who didn't know these kind of things? I guess what Democrats are saying that the joke in that community is the one good thing about Obama is that he makes Carter look good. <laughs> you know, one one thing after the other. Let, let let's talk about Gaza. You know what gets me is this State Department. I mean, we saw Kerry on the open mic uh, with Chris Wallace. He didn't know he was on an open mic uh, mocking Israel's pinpoint uh, uh, attacks. Uh, and now he's you know he's demanding a ceasefire. Obama says uh, you know they all say that Israel has a right to defend herself, but that's enough. You've done enough damage. Uh, you know, stop now. Um, where do they get that from? Can I just say this about Israel? If it weren't for the Israelis, the Syrians would be nuked up today. This would be a whole different world. This, the, the Israelis took out the Syrians. The Israelis are holding, they're the only last bastion of stability, freedom, and hope for that entire region, which is otherwise imploding while our skies are exploding while our border is evaporating you know the the it's, it's like the, the faith community in the united states you don't have to be a believer to uh, enjoy the benefits of those that do and maintain that that value system and those morals and in this case the, the respect and dignity of each individual human being and freedom that's what the israelis do I don't, I don't, I, the, the anti-Semitism, I'm kind of loath to call it that, but I don't know what else to call it, that's, that is having our 
government mimic the attitude of the UN is heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking, and it's shudderingly frightening. It really is. No, I couldn't agree with you more, uh, and and it's and it's blatantly obvious as well. You know, even Bill Richardson, who was on, uh, who, who we're going to talk to in a little while, has said that. Uh, uh, he wishes that the State Department and and uh, and the human rights uh, p portion of it would uh, spend more time on, on focusing on the persecution and slaughter of Christians than on criticizing Israel. Persecution, rabid persecution of Christians. That John Allen has a new book out, and it's it it kind of doesn't want to raise the ire of liberals, but it's we have it's tortured, displaced, destroyed the Christians all over the world, but particularly in the places where we should be standing up for them. Well, we should be standing up for them everywhere, but we're worried about people who, with whom we can't negotiate. The, the, why does Israel, let's go back to me, Israel has a right to defend itself. How about Israel has the right to exist, and they shouldn't have to be defending themselves to preserve their very ability to exist. The whole premise is crazy, right, to defend themselves. They shouldn't have to be in a constant defensive crouch. No, right, absolutely. But uh, this is what it is. And if Obama and, uh, and Kerry get their way, they'll make Israel to uh, sign onto a ceasefire. And then, you know what, make Israel to uh, sign onto a ceasefire. And then, you know what, I, what, what really gets me is they keep talking about, then we could address what Hamas has to say after they, after, as, if there's a ceasefire, we're going to negotiate? I mean, uh, I, I, I know, I, you know, Mary, I don't even know what country we're living in anymore. I really don't. I know, but don't worry, Steve. Hope is on the way. All right, well, let's have talk a, about hope on the way. We're going to have yeah. a good midterm. It, we have the states, are Scott Walker and Mike Pence. There's a, a b bunch of governors that are doing great things in the states. The cities are doing fine. Obama and them aren't going to be around for long, and they're going to be have to suffer a sound defeat in the midterms, philosophically, substantively, and electorally. But... The, in this instance, Bibi Netanyahu and the Israelis are tough, tough, tough. It doesn't matter what Kerry and Obama want. Nobody fears, starting with Putin, nobody in the world fears this country anymore. Weakness invites, invites provocation, as my old boss, my former boss, used to say all the time. That's why you see Putin behaving the way he is, but you won't see Bibi Netanyahu behaving that way. I hope you're right, because, uh, you know, I think uh, taking action against uh, Israel is probably the only country that... Uh, Obama would take action against and, and punish it. What, what about the FAA banning the flights? They've reinstated them. There was a lot, of, a lot, lot of accusations from Israel and from others like me that that was purely political in nature, kind of uh, a punishment, if you will, from uh, this uh, the, the Obama administration. Do you buy into that at all? I'm shocked. I'm shocked. Speaking of the Middle East, the Obama administration behaving politically against uh, Israel in the walk up to a. A, an election where they had to turn out their liberal base, which doesn't, I mean, I, why Jewish people continue to vote for Democrats, I, I have no idea. But I wish I'm I could shocked, tell you. Shocked that they're I playing I politics. Yeah, I really wish I could tell you. All right, let's move on to, uh, uh, you know, the revelation yesterday that uh, the GAO had uh, fraudulently purchased uh, uh, Obamacare and uh, gotten subsidies on fraudulent information as well. Almost every time they tried, uh, you know, this is something nobody's talking about because there's so many other things going on, but this is something that should not be forgotten and not be overlooked. It's just a disaster on every single level. You know, we've, we're kind of talking every week now, every single show, and we're not apocalyptic types. Every single show, there's something more egregious some offense more egregious than the last. Yeah, you're right. Okay? So the 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 the, Pelix, the appeals courts circuit splitting on the subsidies, which are nothing more than wealth redistribution anyways. None of this would work without the subsidies, and the subsidies are robbing Peter to pay Paul. The whole thing is a house <coughs> of cards. And that it's being done as corruptly as it's what I said last time about Lois Lerner. It's bigger than Lois Lerner. It's systemic. And now the the IGs are are say hey, not not I don't know. I I can't, they're all like the three monkeys. I can't. I don't see nothing. I see no evil. Hear no evil. Speak no evil. You know, you brought it back to the to monkeys. You know that. 
Oh, damn me! Damn <laughs> what the hell? You win. Okay, play whatever you want. No, 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 no. We're gonna we're gonna change it next time. I promise you. Uh, Mary, always great to talk to you. Uh, thank you so much for making time. We'll speak to you soon. Go with God, my friend. Peace Take care. Be with you. Take care, Mary Matlin, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, very, and she's right. Whenever we talk, every day, every time we talk, there's something new, another scandal, another tragic event, another national or international, you know, outrage or emergency. Uh, I, I, I just never recall any, and I remember sitting there on WOR radio in, in 08, in 09, in 010, and, and saying, you know, it's one thing after another, you can't keep up with it. But that was nothing compared to what's going on now. Now look at the magnitude of the scandals. Look at the magnitude of the IRS. Look at the magnitude of Benghazi. Look at the magnitude of, of Pu the Putin situation. Now uh, the, the reports today that there are troops amassing on the Ukrainian border five miles from the border. What's Obama going to do about that? Nothing. Just yell at Israel. That's all he could do, and that's all he wants to do. All right, we're coming back, folks, with Gimme Five on the Steve Malsberg Show.